Want to bet? You can do it at Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. The World Series may be over, but we still have a lot of football and hockey to talk about and bet on. Bet pregame, live in play, or on one of our many prop bets. Made for Canadians by Canadians, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Ontario only, 19 and over. Please play responsibly hockey question not sure how it would how it would work contract wise but with injuries on the Leafs blue line is it time to sign call up Topi Nimola um no is the easy answer um you know he's still he's still a prospect developing um the Leafs I think still have reasonably high hopes for him I haven't heard too much about him from being honest this season and and his development and, and where that's gone but you know I think that it's it's fair at this point that they have, well, they're playing six guys every game. They also have now Connor Timmons would be the seventh. And it's not that long that before TJ Brody's back and then Morgan Riley after that, Jordy Ben. So I think that they have enough depth that that, that won't, wouldn't be the way they'll go. You know, what I'm, I'm curious to see is, though, as we get closer to the deadline is, you know, are they in the market for a defenseman? Do they look at this period? Because the truth is, as we're recording this, they've actually done pretty well by giving Sandine and Lilligren more minutes. You know, they're on a three-game win streak headed into their game Monday night in Detroit. Um, they played a lot out of Mark Giordano uh, and Justin Hall in particular. Like, like they're patching it together okay. They're playing pretty well as a team. And so I wonder if one of the, the outcomes of this is maybe they don't, they don't feel that they have to go and make a, a move for defensemen as we get close to the deadline. I mean, that might be the the kind of ironic part of what, what gets learned during this period. And, and I do know... You know, Kyle Dubas, when he when he saw Morgan Riley added to the injury list, um, and then obviously subsequently Jordy Benz, so the Leafs are down four defensemen. They're down their top three defensemen, though. That that he was thinking this was an opportunity to learn about what he has, and maybe what he's going to learn is that they don't need to go get anybody uh, at least at that position, and they're using their available cap space maybe to add a forward. Yeah, maybe just getting Connor Timmins is sufficient. Yeah, I anyway. mean, I, I'm not sure what to make of the Timmins thing. I mean, look, it was a low acquisition cost, right? Uh, they traded Curtis Douglas, an AHL player, um, who may be coming in NHL. Certainly, intriguing player. He's six foot eight and scored a lot of goals in junior. Um, but you know, Timmins has also had was was certainly a top prospect, you know, back in the day. But has had a lot of injury issues. You know, he was in a position where he he wasn't going to be in Arizona's plans, uh, and and so you know, I think he's a bit of a project for the Leafs. But given that he's big body, a right hand shot. Uh, which is something they don't have a lot of. I, I don't see any any downside to it, but I just I'm not sure yet what how significant of a role he's going to end up playing. I mean, they made this trade even with all these injuries, he still hasn't gotten in the lineup. So I think that 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 kind of tells you they want to ease him in, and, and certainly as they get healthier, it might be tough for him to find a spot to play with the NHL team. But I guess we'll have to see how that develops. Next one from Rico: Any rumblings on where the Devils and Jesper Brat stand on extension talks? Nothing too specific. You know, I, I don't think that at this point, though, I mean, it's something that's necessarily going to get done during the season. Uh, he's a restricted free agent. So, you know, the, the Devils will still own his rights and he's having a great year. So, you know, why why mess the, the apple cart up at this point? Uh, and I know it took them a while to get their the last deal done with him. And so pretty confident in saying the man's going to get paid pretty well on his next deal. I got no reason to believe it won't be in New Jersey, but I, I, I don't think that that's the kind of contract that's going to come down um, during the season. But but we'll have to see how that that plays out. Maybe the Devils are going to seek that certainty at some point in time. But I don't see any any reason to have to rush through this. And especially if you're Jesper Bratt and you're playing well and you're producing points, I mean, why not wait and see, you know, exactly what total you get to this year? Because that will impact where, what you can do next summer when you become a, a restricted free agent. From Simon Cooper, what are the best rivalries in the Western Conference? Eastern Conference and Interconference. Oh man, that's tough. I mean, Rangers Islanders jumps out to me. Bruins Canadians is always a traditional rivalry and bolstered by a lot of playoff series over the years. Um, you know, Pittsburgh Washington is a pretty good rivalry with Crosby and Ovechkin. And again, I think that the key ingredient is lots of playoff series over the years. Um, Western Conference. 
I mean, there seemed to be some legitimate bad blood between the Sharks and Golden Knights at a certain point. Um, but I don't know if that's there. And obviously the Sharks aren't, aren't really in, in the contending mode anymore. So that might have fallen off. I mean, we had a battle of Alberta last year. Calgary Edmonton's pretty spicy. Um, I know both teams are maybe playing a little below where they'd expect to be at this point in November. But, you know, there's a chance we'll see them in the playoffs again. And that, that'll get going. Uh, I don't know about interconference. Is there anything that jumps to mind for you? Um, like, I feel like the, the rivalries are either geographic based or they're based on recent sort of reasons for bad blood or for animosity. You know, like there's a time Chicago and L.A., they played a couple of Titanic series or two of the best teams in the West. Like that was a great rivalry, but I'm not sure I would consider it a rivalry today because both organizations are a long way from that point. Um, Colorado Detroit is the first thing that stands out to me, but it's nowhere near the rivalry it was in the 90s and the 2000s. Nowhere right. near. And, and in the 90s and the 2000s, Detroit was in the Western Conference, so it wasn't an interim. Com- it didn't start off it as was. an interconference rivalry, right? Yeah. Um, it's a good question, though. I, but I think one, I think hockey's a sport that's that's kind of built on rivalries to some some degree, and and that's I don't like this playoff format. I've said it in the past. I don't need to hammer on it again here. But the the one argument that I can't really counter is that it does it does set up where you're going to get more rivalry type series, certainly geographically, with the way they they've gone strictly to the, the divisional playoff format. I just I'm just not sure it's the most fair way uh, to do it because. You know, sometimes we're having the, the, the first overall play the fifth overall team in, in round one. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 